Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'll try to stick to the to the time, which is already uh, be extraordinary. Tiny. Um, so, good morning. I would like to thank uh, Karen Stewart and the organizers of this conference for uh, their invitation. Um, what I'm going to present today is part of a current reflection that I started a couple of years ago in my PhD and continuing today as a postdoc researcher at uh, the Max Planck Institute for the Study of Diversity located in uh, Göttingen in Germany. The general question I'm addressing is the following. Um, is it possible to reconcile business and justice expectation through the making and uh, the implementation of diversity policies and diversity management? This is quite broad uh, question. And this morning, I'd like to invite you to uh, Brussels, the capital city of uh, Europe, in quite uh, perilous times, uh, as you, all of you already know. Uh, but Brussels, which is only uh, a two-hour trip from here by train, and where diversity as a policy objective uh, is a quite young and still controversial topic. Surely, we don't have the same historical depths uh, regarding diversity that the one that you have here uh, in the UK. Uh, so I hope you will enjoy uh, this trip. Uh, it could also uh, well be that I will be the one uh, to learn uh, the more uh, from you uh, today. So the question, uh, sorry for my slides, we are, which are quite heavy, so maybe just don't focus too much on, on, on this. Um, Social justice, uh, as defined by the American ph um, feminist philosopher Nancy Fraser, uh, is a mix of material and symbolic dimension. Improving social justice means to um, combine redistribution and recognition. Um, diversity management has been presented uh, by many people as kind of positive uh, sum game, a kind of win-win situation uh, in which Everyone, including shareholders, direction managers, employees, and populations facing discrimination on the workplace could get something from, because everyone has something to offer, something to, to contribute in terms of competencies. You, you know these arguments. Diversity management received also a lot of criticism from social scientists. Here I, I, I mentioned John Wrench and some others. Uh, um, critical diversity studies, uh, mentioning dilution of race issue, reification of differences, neglecting uh, domination processes. All that is uh, surely true to some extent, yes, but this is why I'm uh, here. However, um, definitions and practices also vary a lot from one situation to another, uh, from strictly instrumental to more uh, progressive use. Uh, as uh, mentioned by our institute in Göttingen, Steven Vertovec, that maybe some of you already know. So my starting argument is that there is a need to investigate more how implementation uh, processes uh, currently, uh, concretely, uh, are carried out. Uh, I'll be quick with, with the theoretical framework, just mention that I'm political uh, scientist or political sociologist interested in concrete processes of implementation, uh, considering that actors, field actors, are uh, sometimes the decisive policy makers. We have the, the official one, politicians, uh, the heads of uh, administrations and companies, but on the field, actors are really um, the very important decisive policy makers. Um, the instrument I'm, I'm going to present is called uh, the, the diversity plan. I, I will come back to this in a minute. Um, I will say just quickly that I'm, contrary to my uh, former uh, colleague, I, I will not show you uh, numbers and graphs. I will uh, stay in a classic French uh, uh, qualitative perspective, which is, has also some, some, some uh, qualities. I'm sure you would agree with this. So I'm basing on uh, semi-directed interviews and uh, the use of archives, um, administrative archives. Uh, so I will directly go to, to, to do the story. Um, at the end of the 90s in Brussels, uh, the International Labour Office uh, commissioned academics to uh, question ethno-racial discrimination on the uh, workplace. And unsurprisingly, um, they discovered that job seekers uh, with a foreign background were regularly treated uh, differently and in a negative way when they applied for jobs in, in private companies. So 
uh, regional authorities decided to take action to, 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 to complement what was already done, uh, and they um, developed what they called uh, a policy called fight discrimination at the recruitment level with a couple of uh, measures, including public campaigns, seminars, good practices, uh, guides. The thing is that a few years later, 2005, a new survey um, expressed again uh, the persistence of discrimination practices and policymakers at this moment said, if we continue as we have dealt uh, with the problem so far, we are heading straight for disaster. So the argument changed a bit and diversity, diversity management was no more called a challenge for firms, but a real asset for your company. So it's a new, a new slogan with new policy instruments, uh, uh, regional diversity charter, 2005, the diversity plan uh, that I will present in a minute, and also um, regional label, regional li diversity label awarded to a couple of, of companies uh, in from 2010. So shortly, what is um, the diversity uh, the diversity plan? Diversity plan gathers representatives of the region and private uh, companies. The idea is that companies who want, this is a strictly incentive device, companies who want to engage into this process have to implement measures regarding recruitment, uh, staff management, and communication, both internal and external. They have to think about and try to do something in favor of uh, target groups defined uh, through the criteria of foreign origin, gender, age, and disability. And for doing so, they receive financial help during two years, up to 10,000 euros. And also, uh, they are coached by uh, regional diversity consultants. So the, the, the period I studied, 2007-2011, around 50 companies were involved in this process. What I'm going to do now is to present you three quite different cases. The idea is not to have something representative, but to, to show some uh, distinct uh, processes, different results, different uh, stories. I will start with uh, company one, uh, which I call a successful process without uh, content. This company is a Belgian medium-sized company in the, of the fast food sector uh, with quality products, with a nice image, uh, co communication policy emphasizing social and env environmental responsibility. Um, expanding, clearly, at the time with a couple of restaurants in Brussels. Maybe some of you already know these uh, good restaurants, but I will not quote, I will not mention them. Uh, right now. Uh, from the beginning, uh, um, authorities of the Brussels capital region were the main promoters of the, of the project. At the time, they had to find new candidates to, to engage into this uh, instrument, and they also had to um, train uh, their uh, regional consultants, who for some of them were discovering the topic, uh, let's say this way. Company One was a good candidate because of a positive image, dynamism, open-mindedness, uh, already experience in managing a uh, diverse workforce um, with regard to disability in particular. For their part, on the side of the company, officials were uh, much more skeptical uh, because first they were not forced to engage into this uh, instrument. The company was expanding, as I said. Um, they considered their staff to be already diverse. Uh, we are in the, um, in the fast food industry, so it's not surprising that many people come from, from everywhere. Um, and finally, what incited them to, to engage was financial, human, and symbolic resources they could get from, from this instrument. I'm summarizing. Uh, both parties reached an agreement, a couple of actions were uh, carried out during two years. And at the end, uh, no particular change uh, regarding the staff um, composition. Uh, when I interviewed uh, some uh, human resource officer, uh, they told me uh, regarding people with a foreign origin, we were already good. Europe, outside Europe, every direction, that was fine. 
And when I mention discrimination issues, they say, no, we did not talk much about it because that's very much part of us. Uh, attitude will always be the most important thing. So there is no need to explore more this, this issue. And the main, uh, the, the main effect, in my view, was that these managers reinforced their self-confidence. Uh, I will move to company two, which is a case of a deadlock uh, in the implementation. Different company, a uh, huge one, one of the biggest um, uh, companies in the um, retail uh, sector in Belgium, in Europe, worldwide. Uh, at the time, the company was facing a severe um, internal crisis with a restructuring process, strikes, demonstrations. It, it was very, very uh, tense. The, the plan, the diversity plan, started in 2009 with quite modest uh, ambitions. Uh, Brussels authorities were very motivated by, by the idea of involving this company because it would have uh, reached a very large number of workers. They have 3,000 and something in Brussels. On the side of company two, um, some officers of uh, HR department were interested first because they, they wanted to reconcile ethics and commercial motivations and also because they tried to recentralize and harmonize uh, management practices which differed from one store to another. Um, however, the direction was uh, much less interested. Directors could hardly understand the economic value of the, of the approach and for their part, unions um, showed limited interest in this instrument uh, where, uh, when the restructuring process was going to close stores and eliminate uh, jobs. So a couple of measures uh, started being implemented, some trainings for uh, um, store managers and HR uh, managers. Uh, the thing is that the, the social conflict entered into a new phase uh, with a new ID to, 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 to close uh, um, shops, to freeze wages for, for years, new strikes, new demonstrations, and the uh, Brussels government decided to stop uh, the um, diversity plan, thinking that politically it was just impossible to support the plan uh, while the company was dismissing hundreds of employees in the region. Hope comes with company three. Uh, which I call a way to reconcile business and demands for justice. Company 3 is a Belgian branch of international firm located in, in, in London, but once again I will not mention the name. Um, this company at the time was facing a serious conflict, opposing staff members uh, to the management and also dividing employees along ethnic and political uh, lines with frequent strike and clearly a, a risk of, of bankruptcy for, for, for this uh, company. Um, in one group, we had uh, Belgian uh, Brussels inhabitants with a Moroccan background claiming, it was uh, true, uh, that they were discriminated by a second group of workers, uh, Dutch-speaking ones, were working in the company for a longer period and affiliated to uh, another uh, trade union. Um, so in this case, we had a coalition between the direction who wanted to, to save uh, the company, to reduce uh, the conflict and to get the economy uh, activity back on track, and uh, some uh, union delegates who also wanted to, to, to save uh, the company but were also demanding better recognition of their competence, qualifications and more uh, equitable management practices. Um, at first, uh, Brussels authorities hesitated to implement uh, a plan in such a context for different reasons, but finally they agreed a first phase, a second phase, uh, several measures are carried out. For instance, all executive officers, managers, employees who are trained on issues of uh, discrimination and diversity, employees uh, with a foreign background, for some of them were promoted uh, while they had been blocked and discriminated for uh, years. And at the end of the plan, they considered their situation had improved uh, in terms of hierarchical, uh, this is a tough one, hierarchical uh, position, but also in terms of recognition of uh, cultural legitimacy. 
And finally, the diversity plan created a positive dynamic that helped the company to get out of the conflict in which it had been engaged for years. So, uh, small discussion. Uh, my investigation showed that legi the legitimacy of this diversity varies from one case to another and is not straight away considered as something obvious uh, within uh, companies uh, located in, in Brussels. In the case of Company One, uh, recognition of diversity is largely artificial. Management celebrated diversity as a distinctive uh, dimension of their firm uh, with regard to ethnicity and cultural background in particular, but they used a very loose, very weak definition of the notion, uh, avoided to investigate in detail their practices that did not question power relations between employees, managers, and the uh, direction. In Company 2, um, diversity was not a legitimate uh, issue, neither as a notion nor in terms of uh, policy. It was part, it was a component of the workforce, acknowledged but in a very superficial manner. And as a policy objective promoted by Brussels authorities, um, it caused difficulties both to the direction and the unions who had other uh, concerns at the time. By contrast, in Company uh, three, diversity moved from the status of a problematic and non-assumed uh, reality to that of a solution, which finally allowed uh, saving the company. Then, and I will uh, end with this, uh, I found contrasting results regarding the balance between um, economic efficiency and demands for justice. Uh, in the case of Company One, performance doesn't need uh, diversity. Uh, the absence of people with foreign uh, background at the director or the management level, for instance, uh, is not a problem in terms of uh, opening new restaurants uh, and increasing revenues. So the company was doing well and uh, nobody saw the benefit to change uh, uh, the company with regard to, to diversity. In Company 2, the economic project promoted by the direction uh, based on efficiency and the claims formulated by uh, unions ignored uh, diversity in the same way. Reversely, uh, efficiency and justice issues were combined in the case of uh, Company 3 to, to, to save it from, from bankruptcy. Uh, among the cases I analyzed here and elsewhere in my previous research. This is the only one that I found was really confirming the assumptions of the business case for, for diversity. Um, however, this is an interesting uh, case and um, maybe not the most common, but encouraging one uh, to, 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 to see in further research if and how uh, business expectations and social justice issues may be combined. I would like to thank you very much. I think it's fine.